teenagers drinking like there's no tomorrow. 8.30 tonight. Tonight, one of our contestants could win a magnificent Mazda 323 Deluxe 5 door sedan. Mazda, nobody does it better. On. The Trivial Video Show. Now let's meet the host of Trivial Video, Michael Pope. Welcome once again to the Trivial Video Show. Tonight we promise to give you a smidgen of the stupendous and a cornucopia of the inconsequential. And we will meet three new contestants and who is first, Tony? Our first contestant has eels in a backyard, which is better than bats in a belfry. From Sydney, here's Amanda Bell. Hello, Amanda. I'm very well, how are you? Thank you. Good and relaxed? Yes, sir. That's good. Eels as pets, that's unusual. Oh, only in my backyard. Oh, you only keep them outside? He's in uh, the river. <laughs> oh, right. I guess you're fairly elated about that. <laughs> no. Uh, OK, good luck to Amanda. Thank Moving you. right along, second contestant, Tony. Our second contestant's been to Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday Islands, but not Saturday Island. And he's from Brisbane. Meet Bill Galia. Hello, Bill. Hello. Welcome to the show. Thank you. All those islands, are they off Cape York Peninsula? Yes, right up the tip of uh, Queensland. Right. Every day except Saturday. Why haven't you been to a Saturday island? There's none. There's every other day, but there's no Saturday. There we go. We should charter a flight, find an island, and call it Saturday Island. All right? Yes, thank you. You're on. Good luck tonight, Bill. Thank you very much, Mike. And thirdly, Tony? Our third contestant, if we ask nicely, can pull a mean face. So let's try. From Brisbane, welcome Carol Harrison. Yeah. Hello, Carol. Yeah. Welcome to the show. Thank you. All right, now here is your chance. Will you please pull the meanest face? My daughter will kill me. No, go on. She... she, she... <laughs> Good night, Carol. Good luck. No, you can't go now. Good luck to everyone on the Trivial Video Show. And let's check our buzzers first of all. Carol, you can use your face if you like to press that. <laughs> no, use your hand. Terrific, that's working. And Bill. Great. And Amanda. Very good. Three working buzzers, so 25 points to get you going. And let's get going right now. Coming up, we have the finalists of the world's biggest show-off competition. Mick Jagger and David Bowie. Now, David Bowie starred in a recent movie about prisoners in a Japanese prison camp. What was the title of the movie? No one saw that movie. It was Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence. OK, good movie. Watch the screen. Now, in this scene from the early Aussie film Talkie Mad, the chorus are looking up a giant kangaroo's nostrils. Which stocky little kangaroo gets its name from combining the words wallaby and kangaroo? Bill? Wallaroo. Yes, that's right. Our first score tonight is Bill onto 30 points. And now look at this champion. Champion Eddie Charlton can make a hundred break like having a cup of tea, as he once quietly stated. What is the name of the BBC TV snooker series which Eddie won numerous times? Amanda. Hot plaque. Yes, that's right. Onto 30 points also. Now Moscow in winter is no place to have a bald head because you could get terrible chillblains. <laughs> Now, they were world leaders Macmillan of England and Khrushchev of the USSR. By what given name was Khrushchev known to the Western world? Bill. Nikolov. Incorrect. Carol. Nikolai. No. Amanda, have a guess. Nicholas. No, not Nicholas. It was Nikita. All right, Nikita Khrushchev. These two animals, these two are giant pandas. Are giant pandas herbivorous, carnivorous or omnivorous? Bill. Herbivorous. Incorrect. Carol? Carnivorous. No. Amanda? Omnivorous. Omnivorous is right. Well done, on to 35 points. The score's a bit uneven at this stage. Let's see what happens when we come back from this break. The man behind 60 Minutes unwraps a slice of real life on the Seven Network. A fresh team with a different approach for people who live in the 90s. You 
won't believe your ears. Call right now, 0055-1255. It's really hot. 0055-1255. Meet that special someone. They're only a phone call away. Call 0055-1266. Lines open 24 hours. 0055-1266. The Games of the 25th Olympiad. Barcelona 1992. July 25th to August 9th. Live and exclusive to Seven. Presenting the Olympics, Lucasade, cool liquid energy. Carol, let's see if we can get you off that, all right? And if you don't answer a question in this round, I'll have to ask for another face. Okay, it's only fair. All right, now watch this one carefully. It's from the old series Riptide, starring Ty Harden. Take a look. Hey, are you two having a good time? That's what we're here for. Hey, right. Joe. No, thanks, miss. What's wrong, then? Aren't you having a good time? This is your, uh, your going away party. Of course I am. It's a lovely surprise. Thank you. Well, thank me. Okay, now before we go on, that was a pretty blonde lady who just gave Ty Harden something to eat. What is the name of the actress playing the part? No one. No, no one recognised her. Let's have a look again and see if you at home know who it is. There she is. Surprise is the operative word, eh, Joe? Of course, Jackie Weaver. How could you not identify that voice? Jackie Weaver it was. Now, the next question. Henri de Toulouse-Lautrec is not very interested in the painting he has just finished. I wonder why. What part of his body was permanently injured as a result? Amanda. His legs. That's right, as a, a result of a horse riding accident onto 40 points. Watch the screen. This is the only Australian champion who can do a tyre commercial without moving his lips. What is his name? Amanda. Jack Brabham. Yes, that's right again, onto 45 points. Now, these days, we're quite used to seeing Qantas jumbos, but here's some film of some earlier and smaller aircraft. Australia's international airline inaugurates the first round-the-world service through New York. All right, just a quickie. Now, what was the first pure jet airliner to be operated by Qantas? Bill. DC-3. Incorrect. Um, Carol? The Elizabethan. No. Amanda? Yes? The VJ? No, not the VJ. It was, in fact, the Boeing 707. All right, the Boeing 707. Now, here is country music favourite Reg Lindsay. Some string-plucking musicians pluck with a fingernail-shaped object. What's it called? Bill. Plectrum. Yes, Plectrum is right, under 35 points. That's the end of round one. Amanda, you're in the lead, so you'll be playing a game for this prize. These young Aussie ensembles are made to support your children's backs throughout their important growing years. Made from foam box construction and high quality materials plus a 15 year guarantee from Slumberland. Thanks, Ellie. Congratulations, Amanda. Thank you very much. Do you have children? Yes, I do. Great. Could they fit in that bed? Two beds? Yes, I've only got one son, but I'm sure he'll fit. Oh, good. It goes sideways. That's right. Okay. Well, let's see if we can win them for you by playing this game. Wuzzles. Now, what about wuzzles? A wuzzle, first of all, is a word or a phrase that's written in a sort of visual code. You have to decipher the code and tell us what the word or the phrase might be, all right? right. Now, we'll show you three of them, one after the other, and you'll have 30 seconds to decipher the code. Now, if you get stuck on one, you can pass and come back to it later, but that'll cost you five points, all right? right. Remember, all three within 30 seconds, and for each incorrect guess, we'll take five points. Right. So be careful with the guesses. Any and questions? What are, the, what are they? Okay. They're words or phrases. Right. All right, okay. written Fine. sort of visually. Okay, wuzzle number one. There it is. What's the word or phrase? Tickled pink. Yes, that's right, done in four seconds. That one? Spotted mackerel. No, that was a guess though. Have a look closely at what it is. 17 seconds to go. Oh. Uh, 12 <laughs> seconds. Pass. We'll come back to that one. What's that one? Ice cube. Yes, back to the middle one. There it is. Six seconds. Dotted mackerel. No, that was another guess. Oh, no. Oh. Out of time, what a shame. Stay on there. See, they're holes. Holy mackerel. Holy mackerel. Holy mackerel. I was thinking of a fish. <laughs> yeah, well, you're right with a fish. Not to worry, Amanda, you're still in the lead. Good? Yes. Okay, yes, Thank indeed. You. We'll take a short commercial break and let's see what happens with Amanda and her lead after that.
tonight on MacGyver. Trick or treat. Mac is forced into an uneasy alliance. Start a game, MacGyver. With an old adversary. Joke's on you, my friend. To stage an impossible rescue. Welcome to death row, gentlemen. You now have eight minutes until the girl dies. The shooting gallery, MacGyver, and we have no guns. TV's Indiana Jones, MacGyver. 7.30 tonight. Mmm, I got a plan. The great new single from In Excess, Shining Star. Shining Star! Joins 15 classic tracks recorded live around the world. We've taken a long time to do this. Um, we've really waited and waited and waited and waited until we thought we really had the right performance. The wait is over. Ladies and over. gentlemen, would you welcome the greatest rock and roll band in the world? have never been higher. The results more deadly. 8.30 tonight. Teenagers drinking like there's no tomorrow. Welcome back to Australia's favourite trivial video show with Michael Pope. All right, it is round two. Now, Carol, you didn't answer a question. Okay. I tried. Yeah, you did try, but you didn't. All right, Carol, a face. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, on with the questions. Now, when this clip was shot, tennis players didn't throw tantrums, and they only threw their rackets up in the air when they were happy. At the start of the clip, you saw a famous tennis trophy. What was its name? Amanda? Wimbledon Cup? No. Someone else? Bill? Davis Cup. That is right, the Davis Cup it was. Good on you, Bill. Up to 40 points. Coming in second, only five points under. A duo this time, Laurel and Hardy. All dressed up for a night on the town. We all know it's Laurel and Hardy, but what were their first... Carol? Stan Laurel and Oliver Hardy. That's right, they were their first names. Good on you, Carol. On to 30 points. And now, Good Queen Bess. It's Good Queen Bess. When the Armada attacked her kingdom, one of her naval commanders was reputed to have finished a game before setting sail to defend England. What game was it? Carol? Chess. No, it wasn't chess. Someone else like to guess. Bill? Uh, bowls. Lawn bowls. Exactly right. Well done. It was, in fact... Do you know who it was? Um, who was the guy? Uh, no? I'll Columbus, tell you. It Polo. was... Sorry? Marco Polo? <laughs> no, not Marco... <laughs> 